peace the Lord. Hallelujah. How is everybody this morning? <clears throat> looking good, looking good. Uh, thank you. Praise God. I want to welcome everybody here this morning and everybody watching by internet. I'm going to bring you up to date with some things. Um, as you know, that uh, youth group is, youth rally is pushed back to August the 2nd. Um, please invite some young people. Young people, you here, invite some people at, at school. We go to other churches or whatever. We're going to um, put it out there once we get everything settled and put it on our Facebook. But <clears throat> you got to do your part too. You know, the Spirit of God draws you, but you got to obey the Spirit of God to draw you. You know, you didn't. You think you got up this morning and came into the house of the Lord because you felt like coming. You didn't. The Spirit of God draws you here. You just obeyed the Spirit of God. None of us would have been here if it wasn't by the Spirit of God drawing you. Understand that you can't pick and choose when you go to church. You think you could, but you're disobeying the Lord when you stay at home because of a runny nose. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm going to have to go ahead and say that. Because you have to make a personal relationship with Christ because a lot of people that believe that they believe in Christ ain't even going to make it to heaven. That went over. You can't just believe in Christ to get in heaven. You have to believe in Speak with your mouth. Confess. Not only that, you have to be a doer. Paul speaks of it. I show you my faith by my works. Faith without works is dead. If you're not doing nothing, oh, that's going to be good. If you're not doing nothing, are you saved? Are you a follower of Christ? Understand, a lot of people are going to say, Lord, Lord, didn't we do certain things? And depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you. That word knew is an intimate relationship. I never knew you. You know, when people and married couples have their honeymoon, they begin to have one, become one. We call it sex. Sex. That's why people have made sex abomination because they just do it by doing things. Out of wedlock. Fornication. Do you think God is going to bless us for us to keep this just obeying what he tells us to do? How foolish can you be? It ain't happening. Because you cannot just believe there's a God. You got to know him. You got to know him. Amen? Because like I said, we got a lot of things going on. And if you want to participate, you'll participate if you want to. A lot of, lot of amens today. You will. Because you'll do what you want to do anyhow. It, it just, it, oh, Lord. You're going to do what you want to do. You, you think you're going to go home and miss a biscuit? Oh, yes, Lord. Okay, some of the young people miss your Nintendos, your games. Think you're going to miss that? I make money off of that, Pastor. I don't care what you do. I make money going to my job. You're going to do what you want to do. I'm going to get up in the morning by God's grace and mercy and go to work. Well, you don't have to go to work. I do if I want to eat. So I'm going to do what I have to do to eat. Same way with God. <laughs> Whew, I don't know, oh Lord, start off some services or something, ain't it? But I want to share with y'all that Pastor Isaiah's wife is down. She flew in Thursday night. Uh, 
we, me and Pastor Isaiah went out to lunch and uh, Thursday and got some things situated, some things coming down the pipeline. Uh, July the 26th now, when me and Brother Tony was talked about this, never knew about Pastor Isaiah's wife was wanting to be here July 26th and 27th. We didn't know nothing about it. But last night she called and talked with me and see if we can open the doors up for her to have a conference July 26th, 27th. So we'll give you more detail on that, um, what's coming. A lot of things coming, a lot of things happening, amen. Be in prayer for July the 12th. Me and Pastor Isaiah has got to go to the lawyer's office. So be in prayer that we'll get all that straightened out and done, amen. But I've been talking about just believing in Jesus. You cannot just believe in Jesus and go to heaven. James 2, verses 19, I think it is. James 2, verse 19. Go back and see if they can help out. James 2, James 2, verses 19. You got the same scripture respect there? Make sure we got all that still in order back there. Don't take nothing out till I tell y'all to. In James 2, verses 19, tells us that Paul is, or James is speaking and saying, even devils believe. So if the devils and demons believe, why ain't they in heaven? So by you just believing in Jesus, you're not going to get there, honey. You have to have an intimate relationship with Christ. You cannot pick and choose when you talk to Jesus. Jesus, the Father, wants to talk to you all the time. Every day. Every minute. Look where it says, you say you have faith, for you believe that there is one God. Good for you. Even the demons believe this, and they tremble in terror. So just believing, oh, I believe in Jesus, but never come to church, never read your Bibles, never, oh, yes, Lord, you come to church, but you come once a year. It ain't happening. Quit fooling yourselves. God said, I'm bringing you up for the last days to be a harvest. But people has to be told the truth. Because a lot of people is going to perish for a lack of knowledge. Because God said it in his word. My people. Do you know every person that ever born is God's people? He wants you to be his. He created you. But mankind corrupted you. The day you was, when you was coming out of your mother's womb, they taught you different because of the fall of Adam and Eve. Somebody got to do the, know the truth. Somebody got to speak the truth. And the truth ain't very popular. There's people that is thinking they are going to heaven and going straight to hell. You're thinking it. This is the reason I got to obey God. There's someone watching. I can call your name by the Spirit of God right now. Right now. And God is telling me to tell you, if you do not allow him to straighten you out, death is at your doorstep. Call this church, contact me, and I will tell you what God said. And if you're not for sure, if it is God, contact me anyhow. I'll tell you it ain't for you. But I know your name and your last name, saith the Lord. So you have been warned? Take it as you will. 
in Jesus' name. And I'll tell you exactly what God has said. Hallelujah. We've been talking about this, and we got to the place. Let's look at Genesis, uh, Romans 8, verses 33 through 39. And I'm going to go over this again. You can watch the videos before that, but this is how we got to understand. And the one that just said, what kind of death? Spiritually, mentally, and physically, saith God, you would die. Who dares accuse us whom God hath chosen for his own? No one, for God himself hath given us the right standing with himself. Who then con condemned us? No one, for Christ died for us and was raised to life for us. And he is sitting in the place of honor at God's right hand, pleading for us. Understand, when God used a man or woman to warn you about something, he's not there to embarrass you. He's not there to condemn you. He's there to help you. And if you don't obey, you hurt your own self. God never sent nobody to hell. He has never sent nobody to hell. We sent ourselves to hell. Oh, yes, God. <laughs> and God says, just the reason you haven't hell on earth. Because you choose to live in it. You choose. Well, I thought God, God said, I'm trying to help you, but you don't listen. And you don't obey. So when you like living the way you live, you will reap your reward. If you don't like it, I can help you and straighten you out. But you've got to listen to me, says God. Can anyone ever separate us from Christ's love? Does it mean he'd no longer love us if we have trouble and calamity or persecution or hunger or dispute or in, in danger or threatened with death? As the scripture, scripture says, for your sake we are killed every day. We are being slaughtered like sheep. See, some Christians think they've just been born to be slaughtered like sheep. No. Despite all these things, Overwhelming his victory is ours. Whose? God's? Yours. Through God. He died where you may not have to die. He suffered the consequences where you may not have to suffer the consequences. Overwhelming, the King James says, we are more than conquerors through Christ Jesus who strengthened us. Go over, 38. And I'm convinced that nothing can ever separate us from God's love, neither death, nor life, neither angels, nor demons, neither our fears for today, nor our worries about tomorrow, not even the powers of hell can separate from us from God's love. So don't blame God for your problems? Don't blame God because it's so hard to get up in the morning and come to church. It's so hard to obey God. He made it simple for you. He made it simple for me. We just got to be obedient. He'll give you the strength to obey him if you'll just turn to him. He'll give you the strength to walk with him when he keeps a walking. And he gives you the strength to stand when he stops to stand. All kinds of different things. Nor power in the sky or the earth below. Indeed, nothing in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus our Lord. Understand you are more than conquerors through Christ. You do not have to live on this earth just being alive. 
God says you'll be the salt of the earth, the light, while him is shining through you. How can you be a salt and you die, dying? When it loses its flavor, it's dead. It's no good. Throw it out. How can you be a light when you're always up under a dark cloud? And still say you believe in Jesus, but you don't have that enthusiasm that Jesus said to be enthusiastic with him. God inside you, the hope of glory, quicken your mortal bodies. He moves and breathes in you. To be conquered something, you got to do what you got to do. But you be more than a conqueror. When you get to heaven, that's what you're talking about. Well, honey, I got to conquer things down here. I don't know about you. I don't like the devil. I don't like nothing he stands for. And if you're happy scraping by and eating poop and wobbling around in the pig's pen, so be it. Help yourself. I'm not going to stay in this pig pen. I'm tired of eating my own poop. Oh, I felt that. Yes, Lord. Yeah, you keep eating it because you ain't full of it yet. Yes, Lord. You got to be tired of eating poop. And don't just sit there and tell me, well, I never eat poop, honey. If you do anything that the devil gave you, you ate poop. Sorry, he disguises it, make it look like candy, but it was nasty. Nothing's good from him, comes from him. Nothing. Well, I got some money. I sold my soul to the devil. I got some money. That ain't nothing. That ain't nothing no good. It's nothing. Nothing. You have pure hell on earth. You, you just, you just, you're not happy. You go from one relationship to another relationship. You go from another relationship to another relationship. You ain't happy. Your body still aches. Go by the best doctors and they're going to say, I've done all I can do. What are you going to do now? It's coming, no matter where you think it is or not. That's why God has put me here on this earth, not only for America, but across the world, to say, choose this day who you're going to serve. Choose it. If you're going to be one, a child of God, be one. If not, get on the other side. It's just as simple. Because you'll be able to receive from one or the other if you totally commit to the one to the other. So if you want to commit to the evil world and get your reward down here, commit to it. But if you want to commit to God and get some of your rewards down here and plus a bigger reward in heaven, commit to him. Sometimes I said, Lord, I said, is it just me because I'm getting older? But I just, I don't like, I, I, I'm going to tell you the truth. I mean, people comes and goes here when they want to anyhow. What's the use to not to sit here and tell them the truth and then you don't want to come back? Tell the truth by the Spirit of God because I'm more interested in your souls and your spirit, man, than I am for you liking me. There's people that comes to church and in churches today is busting hell wide open. Because just coming to church don't make you a child of God. Oh, man, you just said it about it. Yeah, honey. Some people comes and don't, and the devil plugs their ears up and don't listen a word what God is saying and go right back to hell where they came from out the double doors. Still have hell. You just can't believe you have to let God change you from the inside out by a personal relationship. We had number one, you must think right. You must start thinking right. You got to must think God's thoughts. Let him renew your mind. We don't share the scripture about it. 
Do not be conformed of the pattern of this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. By the renewing of your mind. You got to have the mind of Christ down here so that you won't be brainwashed down here by lies people tell. Because God hears you. We went through all those scriptures. You can see it on the last video. Well, why don't you tell me now? Well, you should have been here last time. That's what we got video for. Oh, yeah. Because a lot of you use the video just say you went to church. While you sit on your back porches. Do nothing that God tells you to do. Every person has a ministry of Christ. They think the preachers and the prophets and the apostles, they're the only ones that got jobs. You a lie. You have a job, honey. You have a job. You have a job. You have a job. Time to get them cushion butts up, up off that chair and start walking. You think you sit at the house and don't go to your job, they're going to pay you a check? Mm. It ain't happening. If you got one, you better pray to your God that you, hallelujah, I got me a job that I ain't got to do nothing and get paid. That's enough for you to dance before the Lord. We left off number two. You must. These things is not a think about or, 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 or try. You must have a renewed mind, and you must start speaking what God says. There's no other, there's no other alternative. I counsel so many people different, see different, so many different stuff. And my wife could tell you that I had to learn this the hard way. You must speak the right thing. I have caught myself, and my family have caught myself, even while I've been in the ministry, say, oh, oh, oh. What you preach about. You've got to be reminded daily about what God said to do. Because you live in this world, but you're not of this world. You live in this fleshly body, but this fleshly body don't own you. But when we try to go into this mode of fleshly body thinking, we're going to obey the fleshly side. And the Bible tells us there's nothing comes out good from flesh. You reap death. That's it. No matter what it is. So when I get my mouth to start speaking the fleshly side, I reap death, heartache, trouble. Make somebody mad. Make somebody upset. Or put curses on myself. You must speak right and say what God says. Matthew 15, verses 11. Boy, the anointing is so strong up in here, here lately. Is it America? AC's working up in here. Are y'all all froze? Jesus, it's hot. Glory to God Almighty. He's a consuming fire. He's here. It is not what goes into your mouth that defiles you. You are defiled by the words that come out of your mouth. You defile yourselves. You defile each other. This is Jesus speaking, none of the other apostles, prophets, but Jesus. Now, if he spoke it, I, I, I know I've been around churches that said, it's written in red. They worship the red. But everything written in the black, I, I just slip on by. God gave the words, his word to, to man to write it, and it is from God. Yeah, okay, yes, Lord. And it is some things that they had to learn, too, that God trained them how to do it right. So it's what we say out of our mouths defiles us. Get mad, say things. Or just say things just to hear somebody else get upset. You defile yourselves. 
This is why it's so important for the youth to understand. God is trying to reach the youth in these last days like he never been doing before. Why? Because the youth is headed for something major from the enemy that's going to wipe them out. You think they're confused now. You ain't got a clue what the devil got behind for you. So what you say is what you believe. What is in a man's heart, so is he. That speaks out of the mouth. Proverbs 18, verses 21. The tongue can bring death or life. Those who love to talk will reap the consequences. So that's why it's a lot of times to just to be hush. If you ain't got nothing good to say, keep your mouth shut. That's the best day way to do. Because it can bring life or death for you. And those who love to talk, meaning talk the right way or talk the bad way, you're going to reap the consequences. So I'm going to talk good by letting God control my tongue by the way I think so that I can speak. Because what you're thinking about is what you're speaking about. What you're listening and what you have seen has got into your spirit, man, and it, that tongue speaks. Whatever you see or hear, whatever you hang around, it speaks. This is why it's so important. You, if you go three days without getting some kind of spiritual food in you, listen to your phone, uh, read the Bible on your phone, or listen to some gospel music, honey, you are starving that spiritual man. And if you don't feed him, guess what? He's going to start eating at what you are feeding him. And if it's death, he's going to die. Mm-hmm. When you sit there and listen, oh, yes, yes, God, yes. When you listen to cer certain music and your mama left daddy because Johnny was beautiful and all of this other different uh, rap of the worldly system or watch the Atlanta wives fuss and argue like cats, dogs, Jesus. You watch, watch it and giving them the ratings. <laughs> Thank you, honey. You're going to be right there with them, suffering with them. I can see them now. Man, that's got to cut that off. Well, cut it off. You're the one that's going to die, not me. I'm going to live because Christ is the hope of Christ is in me. I'm tired of seeing myself staying in slop, eating poop. I got to defend and do what for me. You got to do what you got to do. And I can say, you, brother, I done been down that road. Till you get tired of eating it, <laughs> you're just going to bust with it. Because eventually you'll eat so much that you'll start puking out the same thing that you ate. And it's going to spread all over the floor. Anybody been sick before? Sometimes you didn't make it to the bathroom to vomit. And you had to clean all that mess up. Oh, everybody else just ran to the bathroom. God bless you. You had, to, you had to go clean it up. It's nasty, ain't it? Believe it or not, that's the way it is in the spirit realm when you're walking. You're in the slop. You're in the, you're in the puke. You're around demonic beings and wondering why you can't get ahead. Wonder why you having problems. I mean, he don't have no respect to person. I mean, he come up in my house. And if I don't recognize it, I fall for his tricks. How can you recognize it then? By dying to Christ daily. He knows exactly what's going on. Because he can fool me just as much as he can fool you. If I didn't have Christ. Because the Bible says he's a, he's a sly one. He's slick. He even make you think he care about you. And lead you right to the slop again. Put you back in the pen. So the 
tongue can bring death to life. You got to learn how to speak what God says. You got to learn how to speak what God has in your spirit. And you can't speak it unless you've been in it and around it to hear it. There's one thing listening to over the phone. There's another thing to have a physical touch. I mean, there's people trying to have relationships over the Internet. Marrying over the Internet never had a physical touch. Sex texting, thinking they have an intercourse. Oh, I'm getting deep, ain't I? This is, just, this is the generation you're in. And thinking, well, we didn't have a physical touch, but we had a physical atmosphere. Well, it's the same thing you might have well touched. In God's eyes, the sin is sin. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. Just by thinking it is sin. Oh, yes. Luke 6, verse 45. A good person produces good things from the treasure of a good heart. And an evil person produces evil things from the treasure of an evil heart. What you say flows from what is in your heart. You must speak what God says. So if you keep speaking negative gossip about a person or whatever it is, you got a sick heart. You got a sick spirit, man. Whatever you feed on. This is why you, especially at this church, you have to be pumped on Sunday morning a lot. Sometimes I told God, I said, we need to buy one of them million dollar air compressors to blow some air in these folks. Because it, it's got to be fast and quick because by the time we get pumped, it's time to go. And the Spirit of God wants to talk to every person. Do you know you may have the key of the service if you listen to God? Thinking you come in here just, thinking you just want to come in and listen to a message and walk out, ain't going to help you. You're going to be still living in the slop. You got to live it. You got to feed on it every day. You got to know him. An intimate relationship with God. Then you start speaking right. Even when somebody upsets you, you can still speak right. Because that's just another thing. It's so hard. I, I just, every time I talk around the boss, man, I remember my family members say, <laughs> he, didn't we just say that the devil has no respect to person? He'll use your mama. He'll use your daddy. He'll use your brothers and sisters. He'll use the pastor if he could. You got to know what God says about in his word when not to look at people, not depend on people. People let you down. But Christ said he'll never leave you nor forsake you. If you depend on people, you're going to have a bad life. Very bad one. Yes, Lord. Some men depend on their wives and their husbands just like mamas and daddies. Wear them out. Wear them out. I mean, wear their mamas and daddies out just trying to be out the goodness of them. The goodness of them. Just wear them out. <clears throat> And the goodness of people sometimes to where they're trying to be good as possible with, through Christ has to understand to say, well, enough is enough. You're about to wear me out. Now, I got my own relationship trying to keep restored. It's time for you to grow up. It's time for you to read the word. It's time for you to start encouraging me with the word. Well, if I depend, you depend on me. We all messed up. That's why I don't depend on you, honey. I don't. 
I depend on Christ. And if Christ doesn't build this house, it won't get built. Cause Tim ain't going to lose no sleep over it. Because you think God is sitting there biting his fingernails because ain't nobody accepting his free gift? No, it ain't. He knows what he's going to do, and he's going to do it with you or without you. He's coming back no matter how much you pray for him not to come back. Lord, just let me be lived. To, let me see my 20-year first birthday, Lord. It ain't happening. He may come back while you're still on the infant, being an infant. You'd be surprised what people go through for the Spirit of God will show you. You'd be surprised, especially here in America, what people does. And go to churches. They've got churches just about on every block. And, it's, and we're still going down like a, somebody unplugged the water out of the tub, and it's just... Where's the miracle working power? Where's the supernatural? Ain't nobody hungry for it. Well, I am. Well, are you wanting him to heal you so you can go back living your old ways? You want him to open blind eyes so you can see how to get to the bar without somebody taking you there? Everything is for God's glory and to bring him praise. He opens blind eyes for you to see and then go around the world, tell everybody God's a God that opened blind eyes. Instead of, well, I can see now I can go fishing when I want to. And nothing wrong with that. But what God is trying to get to people, especially here in America, y'all worship the blessing instead of the blesser. Amen. Y'all worship the gifts instead of the giver. Y'all worship the promises instead of the promiser. My God, you can flock people in a church and say, everybody come in here and give one dollar. God will give you a million dollars tomorrow. There'd be a dollar up here you can't even put up here. Well, I don't, well, it ain't much. Dollar ain't much, but I don't want to miss it if God said give a bill a million dollars. Then you get up to a thousand dollars, you're like, ah, that ain't God. That's just him trying to raise money. God's trying to teach you something. You must speak the right way in what God says. Luke 6, we did it. A good person produced good things from, a treasure, from the treasure of a good heart. So what you, what you do and what you hang around is what you're going to be saying. If your God's got your spirit, man, and you've got a relationship with God, you're going to learn how to speak right. Think right. This is why you'll know, that's why people that follow God close enough, I know who's been reading the Bible, who's not been reading the Bible this week. <laughs> I know who talked to God this week and who hasn't talked to God except by running through just, how you doing, Lord? Good morning, Lord. Keep your hands on me, Lord. That was it. No kind of intimate time with God. Lay your hands on you. This is why you can come into the God's house already ready to praise and worship Him. You come not come to see man. You not come to see pre the person that's sitting behind the pulpit. Him or she is just like you are. They got to learn this stuff just like you. They got to walk just like you. They got to go to this and go to work, go into this evil world, and stand before all these demons and giants just like you. But somebody had to choose to do it. Somebody has to do it. If James and all the prophets in the Bible never obeyed what God said, Peter, and did what God says, the Bible wouldn't have been written, would it? Somebody had to do it. Oh, my God. When are we going to want this stuff? Do you know revival doesn't come 
just because it's coming. It only comes to those who wants to live. You know what revival stands for? It's not for the world. Revival means revive something. So that means you had to have been living at some time to be revived. Meaning you take a person that had a heart attack and they had to revive them to get the heart back beating. That's revival. They died first and then they had to bring him back to life. Revival don't come to a lukewarm person that's sitting up there. I'm just wanting God to make me dance and holler and shout and get all the good gifts. It ain't happening. It'll never come to you. It comes to the one that's saying, if I don't get a touch from God, I am dead. If I don't have fresh water and God cleans my pipes out, I'm, I, can't, I can't live no more. I need revival. That comes to those people. But people that just wants to come and to see a, somebody dance and shout and pass out, let me see if God raised somebody from the dead. You'll never see it within your own. Now, you'll see it when you come here eventually. And then you're going to be saying, oh, they must have been acting. Understand that oh, they must have been just, they must not have been truly dead. Well, when are you going to believe then? I mean, how many people have prayed today when the ambulance went by you? Or when you went by the hospitals or the doctors, did you pray? Well, you should. Not even going inside there. Just walk, going, driving by the hospital. Look, let, be led by the Spirit of God and pray for everybody in there. You don't have to have give a call. Can you pray? If you follow in God, he'll tell you. Because it's too late to start praying when the attack's on. It's time to fight then. Fight with what you have. It's called the sword of the word. The word of God, the two-edged sword. What you say flows from your heart. Proverbs 13, verses 3. Those who control their tongue will have long life. Open your mouth can ruin everything. <laughs> I don't know about you. The devil used me a lot for that. Everybody be high, happy. I'll come in with my depression mode and feeling sorry for myself, and I'll just say something. Blah. <laughs> and everybody like, ugh. No way you had to say something like that. Well, ain't nobody love me. The pastor kept preaching and preaching, counseling me and counseling me, and I just kept on <laughs> to the pastor. I had to eventually say, don't come to me no more. <gasps> oh, God, the pastor said that. He sure will. If he loves you, he'll tell you the truth. Because <laughs> when he did that, I started to say, I got two choices now. Either straighten up or keep doing what I'm doing. And I'm tired of that, <laughs> so I straightened up <laughs> by God helping me. I'm thankful for men and women that got the backbone that God tells you to tell you. Look, don't, hey, look. I could have walked out and killed myself right then. Boy, that went down, didn't it? But I promise you wouldn't be on my pastor's couches. Why? Because just the same way with Jesus. When Jesus tells you your time is up, We have got Jesus so loving beyond man's capability. His, his love is for us. But eventually God's got to say, depart from me, you work of iniquity. I never knew you. Yes, and we think God is just supposed to rub our heads and just, ooh, ooh, ooh. And him himself has said, depart from me, you work of iniquity. I never knew you. Church has been taught people. When I say church, people have been taught wrong because it runs away the big pay and tithe people. It makes people not come back that pays my salary. You ain't got to worry about this, Pastor. I got a job, praise God. 
That's why he said, I got you where I want you, son. You tell them like it is because they ain't paying your salary. As a matter of fact, if I was in full-time ministry, you ain't paying my salary. God is. If you left, God will send somebody else. Those who control their tongue will live a long life. Open your mouth can ruin everything. That's why God says, slow to speak. Slow to anger. Might have been reversed. Slow to anger, slow to speak. Yes, Lord. But it doesn't mean you won't get angry, though. But you speak right. You speak what God says. Ephesians 4, verses 29. Don't use foul, abusive language. Let everything you say be good and helpful so that your words will be an encouraged to those who hear them. Well, there ain't too much encouragement when he tells me not to come back. He's trying to help you because you keep coming back with the same baggage. You got roaches in your suitcase. Don't clean it and let God clean this thing out before you come up in the kingdom. <laughs> Using your picture language. Some Holy Ghost spray. Kill him roaches. People said, man, you, you, man, I have seen a lot. I ain't seen everything, but I've seen a lot. God has allowed my life to be a picture language of everything that I've been taught to preach. I work for Terminex. I've seen things in America you wouldn't think America should be made up in because of people's laziness. Oh, yes, it is. What? I ain't got no money. Hogwash. You miss a pack of cigarettes for one day, you can go buy a, back, a spray can. <laughs> Boy, that went over. Put down the bottle one time. If it ain't your controlling, you see, quit buying the, the six pack and go buy a can of Raid. Oh, yes, Lord, quit buying filet mignons and buy a pack of bologna one time and buy a can of rain. This is how it is in America, though. Well, you just ain't never been in America. Don't tell me I had to sleep with a light on with roaches until I got rid of them. I've been on food stamps. I've been on, I've been there. I've been to the crack houses. Prostitutions. Instead of telling me what some of the things you ain't, don't tell me, I've been there. Don't feel abusive. Let everything you say be good and helpful so that your words be encouraged with those to hear. It means buy a can of raid. There's a way to help control if you'll start seeking God's way you may not get 100% the day you start walking but if you keep walking with God he will straighten you out Amen. the problem is we don't want to be straightened out that's your, that's your problem Because if you want to go get something that you want, you go get it. Well, I'm addicted. That's because you want it. Now it grips you and something that the body, the flesh wants. Now you want, you just get, but the God says call that bondage. Well, I want to get delivered. I know you may have to have a supernatural delivery but the first thing you got to understand, you got to want to be delivered. You want God to say, Ching, like a genie, you're undicted now. If that's so, we don't need to preach. We don't need to make a decision. 
God just snap your fingers and everything's going to be okay. God gave a, a man free will to choose. That, that's why God, do you know God's not a dictator? Ain't that something? How these other religions has to dictate? Other religions says if you're not worshiping this God, we will kill you. For this God says, get rid of everybody that doesn't worship me. That's a dictator. That don't give you free will. Now, hey, that's why a lot of people just choose to bow down and really don't believe it because they're scared spitless. Ask anybody that's been in these terrorist countries. Well, I really don't like what they're doing, but... It's just me. I can't fight. I'm, I'll die. And they will. God didn't help them. While us Americans sitting over here trying to <laughs> trying to say we're a godly nation. That's why God's sending missionaries from other countries to America. Number three, we must, after you think right and start speaking right, you must start living right. Because what you think and what you say is the way you're going to live. If you really believe what God says, you're going to live what God says and believe and work at it. If you think that God is really the God that's in this Bible, you're going to live and speak. You're going to speak that way, you're going to think that way, and you're going to live that way. You must live right. Through the words of God. You must live right through the word of God. What did God's word say about it? It's about sickness. What the word of God, what the word of God says about poverty. What the word of God says about a confused mind, depression. What does the word of God say? First Corinthians 10 verses 13. The temptations in your life are no different from what others experience. And God is faithful. He will not allow the temptation to be more than you can stand. When you are tempted, he will show you a way out so that you can endure. Quit saying that the devil's too strong. I just... Because let me tell you something. If you ain't never been there, you really don't know what other people goes through. But if somebody's addicted to alcohol and I could sit the whiskey bottle sitting right here at Temptation, all you got to do is come and get it. It's free. It's paid for. Matter of fact, I got a trailer full of cases of it. The temptation is there. But guess what? God is not doing that. God does not tempt with evil. Does he tempt anyone? Whew, that's scripture. The enemy is doing it. Tim, you was an alcoholic back in 1942. I wasn't even born, but I'm using your example. I could lie to you and say I was. I looked pretty good for 1942. But I can't lie. Because I'd be serving a different father. The father of all lies. So here you are, been addicted to it. The enemy comes back to tempt you with it. That's why you got to have a relationship with God. Greater he is in me than he is in the world. That has no toad on me no more. Called the Holy Ghost. That's why you receive power, the Holy Spirit. The Holy Ghost of the living God. Step aside, Tim. Let me rise up. He'll take that ball right in front of Satan's eyes. Then he grabs his hand with it. Poof! Bust the bottle on top of Satan's head. Get out of my face. Same way whether you have problem with lust or whatever it may be. Homosexuality. 
He'll try to tempt you whatever you desire the most. That's why God greater sees in you than he is in all the world. Yes. Exactly right. Run. But we can just stay around. Oh, I, I, I stay around it. And thinking you're going to stay clean. It ain't happening, folks. But we must start living right. No temptation is strong enough for God not have a place for you to escape from it. Don't sit there, it's just too strong, it's too strong. Let God live inside of you. Raise up in me, my master. Where you're weak, I am strong, saith the Lord. Now, there could be for all kinds of variety of things, anger, all kinds of stuff. But you got to want it. You have to want it. My Lord, sometimes I'll tell you, say, Lord, you could throw somebody throw a grenade up in here. Sometimes they'll just watch it. Is that really a grenade? Woo! <laughs> we have no kind of mentality of Christ because we've been that bad, not been around Christ all week. We have no kind of simp senses that Christ, the hope of glory, sees you in your bedroom chambers. He knows when you take that dose of heroin and thinking everybody else don't know about it. He knows it. That's why I had to run to Jesus regardless. I don't care if you do know it, honey. I done found out you, oh, you want me to say that? Your behind stink just like mine. You got to have toilet paper just like I do. <laughs> yes, Lord. What's those fancy ones? No, that, that's like the one with a. Uh, <laughs> yeah, okay. You finally got it. I knew what you're saying. A bidet. I get a bidet. Hey. <laughs> You still stink. What kind of preacher is that? One that knows God? One ain't in here to play rules and things. I'm going to tell you what the problem is. Because I've been there. That's why you take a bath. You get out there and sweat and work and you stink. You got to have a bath. Well, I don't smell me, but honey, that's why you done just got used to it. You don't smell funk no more. But everybody around you smell the funk. <laughs> but you get some Holy Ghost water and wash, get everybody to know you've been around the Holy Ghost. You got a sweet aroma. How you doing there, buddy? And he does have some good cologne on. Because I told him last Wednesday, wouldn't it? Get, get the name of it for me. <laughs> but God don't give you no temptation. He don't tempt you with evil. Colossians 3, verses 17 says, And whatever you do or say, do it as a representative of the Lord Jesus. Give thanks through him to God the Father. Understand that God himself talks about Dong in the Bible. They used to be, if you do the study, they had a place where the Campbell poop goes to. Paul reflect on some of that. They call it Dong. D U N G, I believe it is. Understand that God is a representative of what? Of the Lord Jesus. What? Whatever you do or say, hang around, do what God says. 
This is why it's so important when we have the youth rally. I'm praying about it. There's people moving in Baldwin County left and right out of other states that is corrupted. Trying to find a way from their corruption. But I always try to tell them when I do it, look, you see what happens when you think you vote only this way? What happened? Don't come to Alabama and try to vote it in. It'd be the same problem. If you don't learn what made you get to that point, you're going to go over here and go right to that point again. Woo! 2 Corinthians 13, verses 5. You know, I mean, that's just, do you, can you learn? You know, I'm not a professional with what, what the world says in anything. You know, some of them, because they got a doctor behind it, they're higher up. I don't have a doctor behind me. I got a Savior called Jesus Christ. Amen. Nothing wrong not to have an education. I'm not putting down people that have educations. Nothing wrong with that. But we need to understand that Jesus Christ is the only answer no matter who you are. No matter how much wisdom you get, God is the one who gave you that wisdom. And he got a lot more that you don't know about it. So you can't sit there and say you know everything. Because God's beyond the human mind capability to comprehend. The Bible even speaks of wouldn't be enough ink or paper to write what all God did on earth. And how big he is. Examine yourself to see your faith is genuine. Don't wait on somebody else to tell you, uh, do you know Jesus? Examine yourselves. You, it, it's to see if your faith is genuine. Are you really loving Christ? Are you really a servant of God? Are you really a child of God? Test yourselves. Surely you know that Jesus Christ is among you. If not, you have failed the test of genuine faith. So you, when you go talking negativity, when pressure start coming, your faith ain't genuine. Ooh. Well, hey, you ain't been through what I've been through. Yeah, I've been through it. Because that's how I know what I'm talking about now. As long as everything is good, I can speak how faith I have. As long as everything's going nice, I can show you how good God is. But when you still got to preach when you're going through hell and preach what God says and do what God tells you to do, where you could sit there and say, you know what? Y'all could take these keys and when the sun don't shine, I'm out of here. Easily could be done just like you do. People gives up because it, it, life ain't going this right way. People gives up, gives up because I ain't got a husband or wife that goes with me. People gives up, people gives up, people gives up. Well, if that's so, you have not got prepared with God to send you where he tells you to send you. Because the least little complication come up, well, we went as far as we can. We might as well just... See if God will raise up another Elijah, because it ain't happening. You could be the Elijah. <laughs> Somebody has to stand up there and says, Whoo, what are we going to do here, Lord? <sighs> I'm not going until you tell me what to do. And in his right timing, he'll say, pick up that stick. <laughs> Act like Moses, raise the rod, split the Gulf of Mexico. Let's go over to Cosmo without a cruise ship. So I'm giving you a picture language to see what God wants you to do. God can get you there if you'll stay with him. Genuine faith. Meaning, I'm trusting you, God. 
Hey, I'm, hey I don't, I'm not going back to Egypt. I'm not going back. I'm not seeing what they did to me over there and everything else. And I prayed for you to deliver me out of Egypt. Now, if you do the study on the book of Exodus when Pharaoh's was, army was on them at the Red Sea and blocked, if you do how some of the Egyptian, the Israelites, would sit there and say, oh, no, we're going to die in the wilderness. We're going to die out of here because here they come. We just, let's, let's just talk to them and see if we can go back to Egypt. We'll be their slaves. And you done seen some dramatic things happen in Egypt to free you. But now you done got up to the Red Sea thinking it's a bigger problem. My God, don't fool yourself. That's why people said, if God could just show me something, if he could just show me something, I would believe. No, you won't. He's showing you every day before you have breath in your body to ask God to show you something. <laughs> Because if you read the Bible, you'll see with the Israelites, you can learn from them. Signs and miracles happen and still complain, still whine. To where God delivered them through the Red Sea, got over to the other side, the Egyptians that bothered you, I'm going to paraphrase it, that bothered, bothered you Back then, you will see no more. Whoosh, wiped them out. And then got on down in the valley, heading towards the promised land, and started making, says, you know, Moses is going to talk to God, and he's taking him too long. How do we know he really going to talk to God? So uh, we, need a, we need to build us a, build us a God. We need, a, we need to get, get us a God. That's where you got the golden calf was made. I thought I delivered you from Egypt, showed you signs and wonders in Egypt, done showed you how I split the Red Sea, done told you I'm taking you to the promised land and let me wait two months and y'all need another God. Man, I would have been sitting over there. Can't wait to see Moses come back. He come back, baby. Woo, it's taking him so long. Oh, uh -oh I'm not getting in the flesh. I know he's coming back. If God told him to come up there, God is going to bring it back. Well, you know, he, he might be dead. I Go over and talk to her. I ain't got time for you. I'm going over here to this group over here. I'm going to stay with God. Amen. Yes. I'm not getting caught up in this trash. I'm thinking right. Let God make me think right. I'm speaking right. And I'm going to live right. Because I've done seen it. This is why when God does this magnificent power that the world have never seen before, it ain't for you to go back to your ways. It ain't going to happen. It's a supernatural power of opening doors of things that God is going to do to get even more glory for. And then he's coming back to Jerusalem and receive his harvest unto himself. Hallelujah to the Lamb of the living God. Can you put that, did I ask you to put that in, uh, is that in Amplified? Where's Josh at? Was that amplified? I forgot to tell you that, but it's all right. Can you pull that up and amplify 2 Corinthians? Because I'm going to give you one more scripture, and we're going to get four and five next Sunday. <laughs> People said, man, you take too long. Well, I'll go get you somebody with fast food. <laughs> huh? That's that five. All right, look here. Look what the Amplified Bible says. Examine and test and evaluate your own selves. You don't have to have a God to sit there and tell you about you. Let God show you yourself. <laughs> to see whether you are holding to your faith, holding to your faith and showing the proper, what? Fruits of it. 
Oh, yeah. Test and prove yourselves. Not Christ. Oh, y'all didn't. <laughs> God ain't got to prove nothing to you. He know who he is. You got the problem, not him. Woo, boy, you get this relationship that I'm get beginning to start having, you're going to start walking in what we talk about in Romans. More than a conqueror. Hallelujah. Diabetes can't be in your body. Sickness can't come. Diseases can't attack your body. You don't have to have depression. Y'all hear that over there, section B? You don't have to have depression. You don't have to have this mental issue in your minds. Ooh, this is good saving stuff right here. If you, you grasp it, you'll love it. But if you don't ever taste it, you'll be thinking that water that you're drinking now is all you got. Stagnant. No, this is good water here. I don't want nothing, y'all, for die from the devil. Oh, man, all these. <laughs> I'm going to live in victory. I'm going to live in victory. And I'm not going to let you pull me down. If you want to stay in that lowest place, all I can say, I can throw you a lifeline and pull you where I'm at because I'm not coming down to the lowest of lowest. Mm -mm. I don't care that you said I was there, but I'm not there no more. Come on, Lord, let's get it. Examine and test, just evaluate. See, God already knew if Tim was going to be faithful to the calling he called me. But Tim had to prove it to himself. I'm saying, think about it. God already knows what you're going to do with a million dollars. Why I talked to him in my mind, I said, Lord, you want me to say this? God already knows what you're going to do with that million dollars. You done told him you were going to pay off that building if you got a million dollars. That's why you ain't got it, because you ain't going to pay it off. Because you ain't giving that 50 cents that he blessed you with to help pay it off now. He sure ain't going to let you turn loose 167,000. That's why I give what I can. Dollar here, dollar there. Then I got to the Lord says, you know, uh, you think I could bless you with six hours overtime next week? I don't want to work overtime. You must not need the money then. I don't know why I'm getting on this, but I'm going to do it. Here we go, Lord. God says when you give, I'll make a way to supply it back to you. And if that six hours overtime comes up, one you don't Now, wait a minute. Oh, you ready for this? He ain't going to let it interfere with his work. He know how to give that overtime where to be available, and then, boom, you're still available to do what he says to do. Oh, y'all got to get Y'all got to know Jesus. And if you skip, give that $20 over here and then God shows you how to get over time and you make $120 more next week. But the problem with us, who got, I, I ain't working. They ain't making me work. My God, it's hot outside. Right? There's an there's a opportunity for you to make one more dollar more. And you complain now. Because God ain't brought it to a silver platter to say, look, it is yours. Even if he brought it to a silver platter, you'll still knock the silver platter out of his hand. <laughs> that ain't enough with the attitude that you got now. Woo! 
don't shout me down, somebody starts shouting, I'll allow to run around here. <laughs> the old saying, you <laughs> God's got a sense of humor. The old saying, you, you take a stray pen and stick it in a corpse, it don't do nothing. Because it's dead. No, y'all ain't never been there, have you? You can't make nothing hurt when something is dead to it. You could take a baseball bat with a corpse and boom, boom, and it just sit there. It's dead. No life. And when you die to this world and live, let Christ live in you, you ain't nothing in this world can make you upset. Oh, don't shout me down when that preach good. I'm dead to the world. I'm dead to the world. Hallelujah. Woo! Test and prove yourselves. Do you not know yourself, realize and know thoroughly by an ever-increasing experience that Jesus Christ is in you? Unless you are what? Counterfeit. Disapprove on trial and reject it. Christ is ain't supposed to be in you. Don't let Satan keep stealing from you. Don't let... I, people, it's, it's just, I mean, daily, daily, the enemy is stealing from people and nobody know how to get it back. Daily. Or don't even, you know, we, we put up these security cameras and lock our doors trying to help a thief not come in here. A thief wants to come in. He going to come in until he feels some resistance. Somebody showed up. Even when somebody showed up, they don't even care. Hold a gun to him. Get out of my house. Bro, you better go ahead and shoot because I'm going to take your TV. Well, this is how... The enemy has got so much people thinking they're fighting the wrong way. But with Christ in you, whew, Lucifer makes a note and says, look here. Just say, all my demonics, do not go to this address. Everybody else in the neighborhood Let's tack. Don't go over there. Well, I wish I was like that. Well, let Christ live with you. Because he ain't scared of me. The devil ain't scared of me by myself. That God house. This is God's body. Right here. This is God's tongue. This is God's eyes. This is God's. See the difference? I don't want nothing with Tim in it. I want nothing but God. Last scripture, Galatians 2, verses 20. Mm -hmm. My old self have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. So I live in this earthly body. Oh, this is my, this Paul was talking to Ecclesiastes. I told Paul, that's I got the same spirit you said, Paul. Paul talking about Paul. So I live in this earthly body by trusting in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Hallelujah. Go ahead and clap. I mean, I don't know everybody. Oh, but I'm not leaving till God tells me to leave here. I'm going to get some dead, dry bones happy up in here. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Because if not, you're going to get stomped on. You'll be moving then. Hallelujah. Your bones are still moving. <laughs> Stand to your feet. 
Ma, ma, ma. <laughs> I'll give you four and five next Sunday. You got my song back there, sir? Okay, you can. I need you to understand. You need to get this in your minds, the renewed mind, your tongues to line up. Only way you can do that is by what you think on. And then you start speaking right. Then you start living right. Oh, yeah, okay, here I go. Y'all ready for this one? Find your place that you can grow and stay. This church hopping business ain't going to get you nowhere. Listen to me. By the Spirit of God, it ain't happening. You're trying to find a Jesus that fits your agenda. You try to find a Jesus that fits your standards. And Jesus said, it's my way or no way. I'm the truth and the light. You got to find a place that you want to stay and stay with it. And listen, unless he or she get caught up in something. You ready for this? Even if they get caught up in it, if God did not tell you to go, you need to stay where it needs to be done because God could get you to be the pastor uh, to start teaching the flock. Oh, y'all didn't hear that. Everybody's trying to say, well, me, 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 me. I'll go over here. I'll go over here. That's why you have open another campus over here. And open another campus over there. Somebody got to stick with what God says and stay there and quit looking for somebody to entertain you except somebody that called Jesus Christ to grow you. That's what you need. Did you got the song? Play it, please. Because please. God will never leave you nor forsake you. God is the one that's going to get the glory, no ministry. Understand that. Harry Stone's ministries, all these what you call big ministries, is wonderful and great. God's using them. But they're not going to get the glory God is. God is. God is. God is. You ain't got the lyrics for it? Because as you're singing a song, you got to understand what you're singing. He won't. He won't leave you. He won't forsake you. He wants what's the best for you. Anyone here that wants prayer, you're more than welcome to come to God's altar. But church, God is calling you out. This flaky Christian business has got to be stopped. He won't never fail. Never fail. I don't care what you go through. He won't fail if you don't run away from him. Yes, Lord, even though you run away, God said, I still can't fail. That's why I'm calling you back. This is why I'm telling you. This is why I'm warning you. I will not fail.
This is why your song that God is saying, he never fails. He never leave you nor forsake you. I'm telling you by the spirit of God, you need to contact me. Because God says no matter what you've been through, no matter what you've done, no matter what the situation is, that's why he's warning you because he never fails. Amen. Come on, play it back over. He never fails. Woo! He never fails. He never fails. If we fail, it ain't because of God's fault. Christ is it's because we decide salvation. to fail. The rock on which I stand And everything around me is shaking I've never been more glad That I put my faith in Jesus Cause he's never let me down He's faithful through generations Generations, ain't no coincidence that we have in a youth rally I'm telling you, he won't. He won't. He won't let this another generation to be without him. He's going to give them the opportunity to come to him. For he has a calling on their lives also.
you where you're at. But this is by faith that you are letting go everybody around you. You're letting go of your fleshly insults, your fleshly trash that keeps you healthy, telling you that. You come because between you and God, you and God ain't worried about it. Matter of fact, I'm number three. I'm number three up here. Hallelujah. Got two more. And he won't stop. Two more. Come to the Lord. Never see the righteous for saving. Oh, Jesus. And he won't stop. Jesus, we need more of you. We want more of you. Oh. Jesus. I want to build my house upon you, Lord. I want to. God to teach me your way, your desire, your wants, your needs. Oh, Master, there's a Holy Spirit of anointing destroying you. can separate my love for you. Say the Lord, you shall have what you Oh, 
Hanna ba, Hanna da. Honey, I don't know what you just told God, but God said it's all right. <laughs> he won't let me hear what you just said, but He told me to tell you by His Spirit.
Y'all give it up for the legendary Cody Pine. You're fine. Let you learn about that. Let it drill. Let it drill. Let it drill. Let it drill. Don't worry. Hey, you can spit on me. I ain't worried about it in the spirit. Don't let it. Listen. When God's in the spirit, when God has you in the spirit, you're not looking at physical things. You're looking at things in the spirit. I'm standing strong. I mean, I got this. God ain't worried about That's why we got towels. Now, Father, I pray for everyone here, Father God, not by my power nor by my might, but by the Spirit of the living God, I speak healing into every person, spiritually, mentally, and physically. I speak wisdom from God into every person. I speak the love of God inside of them. I speak the power of righteousness that Christ live in them to be uphold and to come out as a mighty fire in Jesus' mighty name and let them be men and women of the Most High. Put the enemy under their feet. Be more than a conqueror. Father God, I pray and I speak and I ask you to point the angels of the Lord around them. Keep them protected the rest of this week. At, on their jobs, at school, wherever they go, get groceries, wherever they go. May the protection of the Lord be upon you. In Jesus' mighty, mighty name, and everybody said, amen. God bless you. See you next week. Okay, okay, okay.